So what is an org-wide team in Microsoft Teams? Is it right for you? How do you create one? And what are the benefits? Let's find out. Microsoft Teams gives you the opportunity to create teams on many different levels. You can have a public team, you can have a private team, and you can have an org-wide team. Now these types of teams all depend and dictate what sort of people can collaborate within that particular team or vessel. Org-wide teams provide an automatic way for everyone in perhaps a small to medium-sized organisation, but that's not set in stone, to be part of a single team for collaboration or perhaps announcements. With org-wide teams, global administrators can easily create a team that pulls in every user within the organisation and keeps the membership up to date with Active Directory as users leave and join your organisation. Now only global admins can create org-wide teams and currently an org-wide team is limited to organisations with no more than 5,000 users, but that may well change in the future. Now, if these requirements are met, global admins will see the org-wide as an option when they select build a team from scratch, when building or creating a team. Now the good thing and the benefits of creating an org-wide team within Microsoft Teams is the fact that with a simple couple of clicks of the button, you can create a team with everybody in it within your organization. Your global admins are gonna be the owners and everybody else is gonna be members and it's kept up to date with Active Directory. So let's see how this is done. Now here I am in the Microsoft Teams interface and I'm using dark mode, which is easier on the eye. And we've discussed this in one of the other videos. On the left hand side, you can see my list of teams that I've spun up using the Microsoft Test Office 365 tenant. Now, to create a team, we've been through this in previous videos, but we'll go through it again. It's quite simple to click on the Create Team section in the bottom left hand side of the screen. Now the create a new team wizard is very refined. Clicking on that one particular bottom icon allows you to create a team, join a team. It couldn't be simpler. We're gonna build a team from scratch. We're not gonna use a template. That brings up this box here. What type of team do you want this to be? Well, we're interested in organizational wide teams or org wide teams, so we're gonna select that. We're going to type in some quick details, like a good name for this particular team. So we're going to call it the Contoso Org-Wide Team. And then we're going to put in, which is also best practice, I find, a little bit of a description. This is going to let people know typically what this team's all about and give them a little bit of an inclining on why they've been added to it. As the use of teams in your organization accelerates, people are going to be members of many different teams. So this little text box is a quick win. Now, I personally find that team sprawl or being added to too many teams can be counterproductive, especially when looking at collaborating. Well, with our team now created, our org-wide team now created, we can now move into the membership and the administration of the said team. We're going to go straight in. We're going to give it a little icon to depict our team and to differentiate it from some of the others. We're going to go for a good old picture. I don't know, a bit of money. Why not? Let's click on that. Save. And we've got a good old bunch of 20 pound British, British notes to go on that one particular team icon. Now you'll notice that by default, our global admins have been listed as team owners. Now you can select the drop down box and select which one of those you want to be owners. They might not all need to be owners. Some you can then change to being members. Now the members will then appear in the member section. As you can see, it's now building the list and this is every user in our organization. Now, just as we removed owners from the owner list and made them members, the same can be done with individuals who may be an IT admin, who can then be made an owner. As in this case, that one particular owner, the IT admin has now been made an owner from being a member and therefore he can administer the settings of this particular team. So be aware though, as we've stated, when an org-wide team is created, all global admins are added as team owners and all active users are added as team members. Now, disabled members within teams 
um, guest users will not be added to them. Okay, so that's very important to realize this. And it's dynamic as well, because Microsoft Office 365 is, as we know, heavily integrated in with Microsoft Teams as it all being part of the same ecosystem. So changes within Active Directory with attrition, people may move, will automatically take them away. Now, best practices to get the most out of your org-wide team. I recommend uh, you reduce channel noise by having only team owners able to post to the general channel. Now you go to the team, you click more options, the ellipsis, click on manage team. On the settings tab, click member positions, permissions, select only owners that can post messages. And you can see that there as well. Also as well, reduce the number of at mentions to keep the noise of constant people posting things in these org wide teams down to a minimum. Uh, and here you can go to more options, manage team on the settings tab, click at mentions, turn off show members in the option to at team or at team name. Now by default, these are set to allow you to do it. Also consider fun stuff like emojis. Now this might not be appropriate for an org wide team. Typically these teams are gonna be used for important announcements. And perhaps you don't want re people replying with funny gifs or memes or memes. Now, only global admins can create an org wide team using the team's client. Although if your organization limits creating teams to using PowerShell, then the recommended workaround is to add your global admins to the security group of users who can indeed create a team. Now, even though members can't leave an org wide team, as a team owner, you can manage the team roster manually by removing accounts that don't belong. You may not want some contingency labor in there like contractors. So as a result of this, you can select the particular user you want to remove, click on the X next to their name, and they'll be removed from the team, whether they be members or whether they be owners. Now, make sure you use Teams to remove the users from your org-wide team. If you use another way to remove a user, such as Microsoft 365 Admin Center, or from an Outlook group, the user may be added back into the org-wide team. There is a way to create an org-wide team other than using uh, the team client. But like I say, that is down to PowerShell, perhaps. And if you can't create it, then make sure you are a member of a team who can. Global admins can also convert an existing team to an org-wide team. So you've got a normal team, for example, this team here. Um, you go down to more options, or click on the three dots or the ellipsis, click on edit team, and you're also given the option then to change this to a public team, a private team, or as we've been talking in this video, an organizational team. I see this with applications along with HR, like I said, announcements, perhaps a sports and social page. Anywhere where you want to in inform your user community quickly and easily of documents, changes to contracts, new discounts that might be applicable to members within your company that they may qualify for, things like that. Perhaps even planning the company picnic. But generally, I think an organizational wide team does have a space in the medium to small business. Not so much, I think, in the global enterprise. And that has been realized by the fact that, you know, org wide team creation is limited to organization with no more than 5000 users. Though, as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, this may well change. But I think it's all really down to the right tool for the right job. And if you want to collaborate on a grand scale, then I think you may want to look towards other Microsoft IT ecosystem tools such as Yammer, which is more of a broadcast loud hailer form of collaboration, where I believe Teams is typically for small groups, typically for agile collaboration. And this is a bit of buzzword bingo now when people be rolling their eyes, but you wanna be talking to people within a team about a certain topic 
and get work done, as opposed to broadcasting things to the entire company. Check out the best practices in regards to cutting down the noise or the hum by only having people able to post in an organizational wide team or an org wide team and also remove the settings for at mentions as well or at team names so people can't just spam everybody within your company with mentions or what could be classed as trivia. Have people dedicated um, to becoming admins, it might even be your marketing department, who can turn around and say, hey, no problem, we're going to put this into the org-wide team. And as a result of that, using Microsoft Teams, I, in this way, I believe is going to work for you. Succinct, acute, targeted messages to your corporate citizens. And I think this is a good way of doing it. Microsoft Teams, as we know, is a great collaboration tool and there are many different ways of doing things in regards to this. Keeping on top of that team roster is paramount. Making sure your team members within this org team is paramount. But don't forget, once you've created your team, use full use of the internet people to look at. I've been the Collaboration Colonel and thank you very much for watching. Check back soon for more videos in the series where we take Microsoft Teams to more deeper collaborative depths. Happy collaborating and I'll see you soon.